In this video, we're going to look at first steps with Google BigQuery, which is Google Cloud's petabyte scale serverless data warehouse. So it's a really good tool for getting started with SQL and um, putting in tables, SQL tables, and then querying them out in analytics tools like Tableau, SAP Analytics Cloud, and Power BI, and also using with the rest of the Google Cloud stack. So to get to BigQuery, log into Google Cloud Platform, and then press the hamburger icon over here. Once in there, navigate down to analytics, and then you can pin BigQuery um, so it's always there, but you can just then click on BigQuery to get into BigQuery itself. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to look at some public data sets. So we can put our own data sets into BigQuery if we have CSVs or we have data sets um, that are stored at Google Cloud Platform. But first, I'm just going to look at public data sets. So we're going to explore public data sets. The data set I'm looking for here is the San Francisco bike data set. So I'm just going to search for that here. So just a San Fran bike. And then you can select this data set and kind of a bit of a strange way of getting it on to, this, to the screen as a project. What we need to do is we need to first select the data set, which is here. And this is the, um, this is the data set. There's tables inside this data set. And we need to click disable editor tabs. And then you can just click anything in here, update without feedback. And then the entire public data sets will be available as a project to query. So in here, I've got all my public data sets. The one I'm interested in is the San Francisco bike share data set. And you can see from this data set is that inside the data set, there is four tables. Um, and we're going to be using these tables in later videos for joins. But first, I just want to query the table uh, bike share trips. So you can see within this table, um, in the schema, I've got my field names, I've got my types, and um, I have my mode, uh, which is whether it's nullable or required. And then I've got my details in here. So this shows me how many rows are in the table and what the table size is. And the table size is something you need to think about when you're querying BigQuery tables because BigQuery is charged based on, I think it's $5 per terabyte. So if you query this whole table, that's 388 megabits. And every time you query it, that's moving towards um, that $5 per terabyte there. So another thing you can do with the BigQuery tables is you can look at a preview of the data. So first I'm going to query this table um, and that's just put up a basic query up on the screen. And then I can look at a preview of the data to kind of copy and paste the rows from. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, take a column in here of the many columns and I am going to make this into a where clause here. So instead of uh, querying every single row on the table, which is 1.9 million, I'm gonna select star, which selects every column here in the data set, where the start station um, ID equals 83. So I can see that there's a couple of those at the start of the data set. So I wanna see all the columns from the data set where the start station ID equals 83. And just one thing to know about the table name in the query, we have back ticks around the table name and it is starts off with the project name, which is BigQuery public data. Then you've got the data set name, which is San Francisco bike share. And then finally you've got the table, which is bike share trips. And then we start querying from there. Another very useful thing is a query formatting. So you can just press more in here and you can format your query. And this is really cool for just, especially when you're writing long queries, to just get it all in a kind of a, a readable way. And I'm gonna run this query, and this query is output 467 rows. So it's all my rows where my start station ID equals 83, and that is 467 rows in the data set. So that's one way of finding out for that start station ID 
how many trips were made. But there is a, a much better way to do that without outputting all that data. What I can do is I can just, instead of doing a select star here, I can do a select count. And trip ID is my unique identifier. So I can count the trip IDs from where the start station equals 83 by just uh, putting in select count brackets and trip ID. And this will just output the, um, the data point of how many trips were made from that station. So I can see now there's 467 trips made from that station. You can see over in the right hand side, it says this query will process 52.6 megabits. The other query processed uh, 367 megabits. So you can see that the, the query size is down when we do this count. And we can see that there's a weird alias on this F0 underscore. So to get rid of that, I can just do count trip ID as trips and I can rerun this query again. And you see instead of the F0 underscore, I have 467 trips. So just a quicker way than doing a select star and taking out all the data, I'm just counting one thing. And because it's just a count, uh, I don't need to aggregate anything. So the next thing I want to find out is from those 467, um, what stations did they end up in? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that column. So select end station name from the data set where the start station name equals 83. And when I run this, this will give me a list of the 467 rows and all um, the end station names. If I want to add more columns to this query. Uh, I can just put in a apostrophe and then I can have another um, column on this. So I can just add the trip ID as well. And I can add any of these fields onto the query. So instead of selecting star, I can just pick what columns I want to output. So I actually want to find out what stations um, that the, the start station ID 83 went to. So I can do this by just getting a list of the stations by select distinct. So this will get rid of duplicates in my query. So I can just do select distinct end station name uh, where start station ID equals 83. And this will just give me the distinct stations that um, start station 83 went to. So that is select distinct. And now I know there's 13 stations uh, from start station 83, but I actually want to find out from those stations, uh, what is the count of trips altogether? So what I can do now is I can get rid of my distinct. I can do end station name. I can do an apostrophe in here and I can do an aggregation on my trip ID. So I get a count trip ID, I've got my end station name. And because I'm aggregating the result by the end station name, I need to use a group by function in here. So it's after the where clause, I can say group by and what I'm aggregating by. So that's the end station name. So I'm gonna group by the end station name and this will give me a, a count of all the trips from each end station that started in start station 83. I can add an alias to this count as well. So I'm gonna, gonna alias as trips. So I can see all the stations and the number of trips for each station. Now I want this to be uh, in order. So what I can do is I can order this um, by the count of trips. So in my query itself, after the group by statement, I can just put another statement, which is order by, and then this is going to be order by trips. And this is defaulted uh, to ascending. So it's going to start off with the smallest in order. So I can see smallest in order is largest in order. If we want to flip that the other way, I can just put a DESC at the end. I can run this again, and this is going to come out with trips and um, the most trips to the least amount of trips. And then there's a couple of ways of 
limiting the output of this. So if I'm only interested in trips that are greater or equal to 10 from that start station, what I can do is I can put in a having clause in here. So you don't put this in the where clause because the group by happens after the where clause. Um, so I can't limit it by something that's happened afterwards. So you can think of having as a where clause for the group by. So I can say having trips greater or equal to 10 and I can run this query. And this will just output where there's more than 10 trips for any of those stations. So greater or equal to 10. Another way of doing this is using uh, the limit clause. So the limit clause will just limit how many rows are output. Um, so what I can do is I can just do limit five because I know that there's only five rows from my view and I can put in a limit clause here and I can run this and this will just output the first five rows here. So I can just run this and this is similar to what came out when I used having uh, but just limiting to uh, five records here and the trips greater or equal to 10. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just a, a double group by in here. So I'm gonna get rid of the station ID. So I wanna find out what are my top five uh, start station, end station. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put start station into the clause. I think I've misspelled that. So I am just going to put in another T and I can see there's still an error. And in BigQuery, you can have a look at the error by clicking on these red icons here. So I'm gonna go over to this one on the right, click it, and it says, select list uh, expression references columns start station name that is neither grouped or aggregated. So I can either aggregate that or I need to put it into the group. So I want to aggregate the trip IDs. I wanna count them by start station and end station name. So this start station name needs to go into the group by clause. So I'm gonna just copy this, bring it down below and group by start station and end station and voila, it's a valid query. I can then run this and I'm gonna get the five um, station pairs that have the top trips. And I can see this is way more trips than I had with, my, uh, with the station that we were using thus far. So this will just answer the question is what start station, end station name has the most trips? So that's the video for today. Just wanted to go through some basic things in BigQuery. They're really just a couple of clauses to get started. Your select, your from, your where, your group by, having, order by, and limits. I hope you found the video useful and I'll be back very soon with another BigQuery tutorial.